Hello there. You're most welcome to today's episode of Women on the Watch, powered by the Shapers Act. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Wonola Adetayo, the Shaper. At Women on the Watch, we remain committed to exposing time-tested principles to enhance your personal and relationship development matters. Today, we will be taking a step further in this mission by looking at the episode titled, Single and Thriving. But before delving into this subject matter, we will take our Bible reading. Our Bible reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 8 and 9. 1 Corinthians 7, verses 8 and 9. To the unmarried and the widows, I say, that it is good for them to remain single as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for another opportunity to learn at your feet. Thank you, Father, because every season of our lives, you are in charge. Thank you, Lord, for the singles. Thank you, Lord, for the married. Thank you, Lord, for the widows. Thank you because you are the God over all. Please accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. As we interrogate the subject, single and thriving, we ask, oh God, that you will open our eyes of understanding to help us to appreciate and to understand how to thrive in every season and in every stage of our lives. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. It has been said that the only thing that is constant is change. Yet, most people naturally resist change instead of preparing for it and profiting from it. The Indomitable by Wanawola Adetayo offers a time-tested framework that will help you ride the waves of change in today's world that is characterized by volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. With scriptural evidence and research-backed facts, the book will equip you with the mental infrastructure that will help you overcome primordial instincts and respond from a place of power every time you are confronted with the realities of our constantly changing world. Give yourself an unfair advantage by imbibing sound wisdom that will help you stay ahead of the curve. Send a WhatsApp message or call 0812-402-0538 to order your copies today. In our society today, the subject of singleness can be a controversial one, especially for the female gender. Many parents worry about their daughters if they are fully qualified for marriage and yet they have no suitors. Indeed, the society also puts a lot of pressure on singles, urging them to get married as though it is the single most important subject after schooling and after getting a job. Yet, when we look through the pages of the Bible, we see single women, like Miriam the prophetess, single women like Martha of Bethany, single women like Mary of Bethany. These are good examples of single women who lived fulfilled lives of impact so we could term them as single and thriving. According to scripture, singleness can be a choice or it can be by circumstance, yet, in either case, it can be fulfilling and it can be a meaningful period. In today's society, the narrative is beginning to change. We have several unmarried females who are finding full expressions in their careers, in their businesses, in ministry, and even in the political space. Therefore, today, we have an accomplished female in the studio who is going to join us in discussing this all-important subject matter titled Single and Fulfilled. Please join me as we welcome 
my sister, my friend, Dr. Enya Bitobi Kuyinu. You are most welcome, ma'am. Thank you so much. I'd like you to please tell us briefly about yourself. Thank you, and thank you for having me here today. Um, I'm Dr. Enya Bitobi Kuyinu. I have uh, my PhD in mental health, and I also have a doctor of chiropractic degree uh, from the US. In addition to that, I run a nonprofit called The Educator, yeah. and um, I'm also a clergy. Um, wow. I oversee, I pastor the project, our The Redeem uh, project in Makoko, wow. which is, uh, has a school with over 190 children in there. Um, has a church, and we are um, we we are construct. We are developing a maternity center. You know that um, our mommy in the Lord, Pastor Mzola Deboye, um, built. So um, well, that is that's um, good. That's good for me. Shell. That, <laughs> that, shell. In a nutshell, that's thriving, simple and thriving. I want you to help us today. What I'd like us to do is to have some conversations that will help uh, singles uh, to understand how to thrive. So I'm gonna start by looking at the value, the purposes for singleness. And my first question to you would be, what does Apostle Paul say about the value and purpose of being single, especially when we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses seven to eight, where he was saying, I wish everybody would be as single as I am. What's the value of being single in the light of Apostle Paul's statement? Thank you. You see, every state has its own value. And I think that is an area we have forgotten, especially in this society. We think the marriage state is the only state that has a value. But the single state also has a value. From what Paul taught us, or from even my own experience, it is a state that allows you to devote your attention without distraction to pursuit of God, God first, because when what you are pursuing is not bigger than yourself, then after a while you get tired and you begin to ask what is in this. But when you are pursuing God in devotion to God, you find out that because he is so big, he is, he is, he is beyond big, you don't get tired. When you reach a level, you want to go further. And so the value of singlehood that I have found and from what Paul has said, the value is that it allows you to undistractedly do the things of ministry. Okay, okay. So, so, so basically, Apostle Paul is saying, because there are no children to be running after, no husband to be pursuing, you can have undivided devotion, devotion. to things of God. Okay, That's it. now... Apart from Apostle Paul, Jesus also, in Matthew chapter 19, verses 10 to 12, Jesus was giving some reasons why, not even for circumstances, why some people may choose to be single. Can you please also enlighten us for that? Because we are hoping that all the people that are putting the singles under pressure can actually also understand that this stage has its own pursuits. Yes, just like he said, Jesus talked about being Enoch either by birth exactly. or by men. By choice. Or by choice. Mm -hmm. And there are, we know in St. Hughes, there are people that have chosen to be single by choice. Even women. It might not mm -hmm. be very common with our Pentecostal, but we know about it in the Catholic sector. Mm -hmm. That women devotedly, they decide that I really do not want to get married. I just want to do the things of God. And so... Um, People make such choices. Um, I lost my husband 22 years ago. And um, over the years, it got to a point that I got so involved in the work I was doing, either in school and all of that. And I realized that as a choice, it was, it was going to be difficult combining being married and pursuing the things that I was pursuing for God. Mm. And you see, for God. And so by choice, 
And you have a lot of people that do that by choice, mm. not because they are frustrated, mm -hmm. not because they don't have suitors that have come to ask them exactly. to get married, but then they have, they know they have a destination. Mm. And based on that destination, they don't want to go less than that. Okay, very good. Now, now, just again on this subject of value, I, I just, in the light of, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 32 to 34, how is it possible for singles to deepen their intimacy with Christ? So I'd like you to share maybe some practical ways. For example, if you look at Mary of Bethany in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42, the Bible records that she just sat down there at the feet of Jesus, whilst Martha was busy running helter-skelter. So, so can you give some hints and tips as to how singles can deepen their intimacy with Christ? I think it starts with first finding yourself. Okay. Um, I tell people that I've been on a journey called finding me. Mm -hmm. And finding yourself, finding your gifts, finding the reason why you were born, mm -hmm. and then stepping out mm -hmm. to doing it. Mm -hmm. The more you do it, the closer you find yourself getting, you know, to God. The more you, 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 you pour out your heart, just like you talk about Mary, mm -hmm. that poured out her heart, a precious ointment. Mm -hmm. And God desires that. God mm -hmm. loves that. So the more you do that, mm -hmm. the more you find God filling your heart mm -hmm. with his love. Mm -hmm. And so your desire for intimacy comes from a desire of totally being who God has created you to be. Mm -hmm. And you can only find that in God as you get closer to God. And then finding things that, uh, places where you can apply yourself. Uh -huh. That is so crucial. Um, I got involved, the, the first time I got involved with a medical outreach, that was in, with an organization called Pro Health. Mm -hmm. And we were in uh, Akwaibon. And for one week, we were there going out. We saw thousands and thousands of people. By the time I got back home, I felt every other thing I was doing was meaningless. I felt this is what I've been called to do, to serve people. Mm. And that started a journey in my life. Okay. And so I think finding that place of purpose, yeah. and, and it doesn't matter, step out. Mm. Don't lock up yourself and think, oh, I'm single. Mm -hmm. Step out, do things, and the more you do, you find that, that your, your love and for intimacy with God just begin to increase, to blossom, to blossom. yes. Thank you, thank you. And, and, and I'm very happy um, the way this has gone because you're taking me into the second phase. And the second phase is, Having found, uh, you know, the purpose of singleness, there is a role for community. Oh, yes. The way God created us, that's why I said male and female created he, them. And so we'll find that we're communal beings. Mm. That's why God also put us in families. Mm. So we have a mother, we have a father, we have siblings. Now, what role does community play in the life of a thriving single? Again, we go back to Martha of Bethany, you know, so, so in serving, as you said, what is the role that community plays in helping that female to pour out he, himself, herself, not just to God, but to others? What's the role of community? Everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> Everything. Okay. And I think in a society, that is why people are suffering, mm -hmm. because the community do not, um, do not think that um, singlehood is something that should be encouraged. Mm. And yes, it's okay. I mean, yes, we want people to be married and have children. Absolutely. But there's also a place of power mm -hmm. in singlehood, yeah. even in the ministry. Mm. Because when we use our singlehood to serve the Lord, you know, there are things that being married, you are not able to do completely. Absolutely. Like for instance, I've been... I'm running a camp now, 10 days. Mm. If, I was, if, if I had a husband at home, it would be difficult for me to be with these children for 10 days. Mm. You know? So when the community understands that singlehood is a face, it doesn't have to be permanent. Absolutely. But it should be a face to be enjoyed, mm. not endured. Mm -hmm. Please, mm. enjoy it. Absolutely. So it's a face, and the community should encourage that. Yes, you can be praying for getting married, mm -hmm. you know, because there, is, there, there are seasons for everything. In counseling, we say that healing mm -hmm. comes when 
um, you have a community of people to help you heal. So somebody has been traumatized. Mm. One of the strongest factors to bring about healing is community, family and friends. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing in singlehood. When you have a community that recognizes that this face is a good face also for you and should be encouraged. And you find a community that helps that. Like I talked about traveling to Joss and finding this, this community of people that are into medical mission. Being part of that community was so fulfilling. Nobody there looked at you and said you are single or you are married. Exactly. You are being given work to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, like I said, we need our community. So, so, so for me, my take out is that singles don't need to sit down waiting. No. Find a community yes. to pour yourself yes. into yes. so that that way your gifts and your callings as a yes. single will also find fulfillment. Which takes me to the next one. What are the practical ways? You've given us an example, but what are the practical ways that singles can use their time, not just time, <laughs> resources for the kingdom of God? I'll give a perfect example Good. in the Bible. Luke chapter 2, verses 36 to 38. Anna the prophetess. Okay, she, she wasn't going out everywhere, but her own service to the community was sitting down right there inside of church, interceding and praying. And, you know, so what are... Other ways, you've talked about the medical mission, you know, are there other practical ways in which singles can deploy their gifts, their resources, and the things that God has blessed them with? The simple scripture that comes to mind says, whatever your hand finds to do, mm -hmm. do it with all your heart. Mm. So the first thing is in your environment where you are, find out what is the need there. Okay, great. That's always the first question, what is the need? And that has been my own journey. Mm -hmm. You know, I have deployed myself in so many ways. There was a time where I felt the need was in rescuing girls from commercial sex work. Mm -hmm. And I deployed myself to doing that. At another time, I found out that the need was to educate youths in Makoko. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in intercession in church, been in intercessory ministry for years, uh, you know. And so the first thing is, Find out the need. It might be teaching. Mm -hmm. It might be, um, I have gone to volunteer in schools teaching because mm -hmm. I noticed that there were no teachers. Mm -hmm. You know, you can volunteer with an international organization, with a local organization, your church. Mm -hmm. Find out, ask yourself, just ask God, use me. Exactly. You know, use me. Mm -hmm. Where there is a need, what, what do you want done mm -hmm. at this point? Mm -hmm. And use me to do it. The needs are endless. You know, in exactly. economics, they say exactly. women's want. They are un, un, unending, unlimited. unlimited. Mm -hmm. The resources to meet them are limited. Exactly. So the reality is that, honestly, we have unlimited needs in our community, in our environment, that we can meet. Mm -hmm. And the singles are really, honestly, in a, an awesome position. Absolutely, to, to find to, fulfillment. To, to meet these needs and find fulfillment. You know what I can add to, to that? I, I, I've always said it that, your pain point is actually your number one agenda. What do I mean? Mm -hmm. You find something that seems to be upsetting you, like you said, in, in, in an environment, okay, people are not being taught. That's a pain point. Mm -hmm. And then that defines your agenda. Mm -hmm. In an environment, mm -hmm. this is not right. Mm -hmm. That's a pain point. And then mm -hmm. that defines your agenda, mm -hmm. which leads mm -hmm. me to <laughs> one more question. <laughs> what are the practical ways in which you know, are, are singles. This time, I want you to speak to church. Okay. To the church community. Mm -hmm. How can singles find ways and means of deploying their own gifts and their own resources practically in the church space, not just the, the other community? The church is a community. Absolutely, I know. It's a big community that has needs. Mm. There are different departments mm -hmm. we have in the church. We have uh, prayer, we have music, we Good. have ushering, we Good. have hospitality, sanitation. sanitation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's where I started from, you yeah. know, you, 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 starting from there. And so um, you have evangelism, you have, I'm sure, you know, when you, and like we said, when you find yourself, because sometimes it starts with finding what you really want to do. Mm -hmm. Then you plug into one of those units okay. and diligently serve. 
as you diligently serve, God is watching. Absolutely. God is one that honors, you know, um, uh, service. Mm, mm. And he will do what he needs, he wants to do at Absolutely. the time he wants to do it. Absolutely. Now I'm going to the last bit of it, and that is the mental and emotional, because that is a reality mm. for the individual and the one imposed, you know, so there are mm -hmm. self-imposed and there are societal imposed issues. Mm. So in what practical ways can singles navigate or manage what you call loneliness and sometimes the feelings of inadequacy that the society makes you feel as if, you know, just the mere fact that you are single means uh, you are lonely. Some are not actually lonely, but, you know, how do people navigate that in case there are feelings of inadequacy or there are issues of loneliness? Mm. <laughs> Very interesting question. I think first thing is who are you listening to? Exactly. Be careful on who you who you are listening to. Mm -hmm. And so if people around you are people that are constantly berating you mm -hmm. and saying we are praying for you, mm -hmm. you know, then um, and that is always depressing you because words are powerful. Yeah. Words hit the emotion. Mm. So be careful of those words that you are allowing yourself to hear. Find, you know, an environment where the words are empowering, mm -hmm. where people see you for your gift, exactly. for the, for, for not because you are single, but mm -hmm. they see the gifts and talents, mm -hmm. you know, within you mm -hmm. and allow you to use them, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I think that is important. Dealing with loneliness, I mean, you will, there will even married people. So are when you people talk me? about loneliness, <laughs> I'm talking about, I was married for eight years mm. before my husband passed on. Mm. You can, there are many people that are married and I'm a therapist. Mm. I hear many married couples lonely, mm. even I would say lonelier sometimes than single people. Mm. Mm. And mm. I say loneliness in marriage mm. is, is, is worse, is really horrible because mm. you have somebody beside yeah. you and, and yet, you are lonely. Mm. And so loneliness is universal. Mm. It is your choice. You can choose to fill up that loneliness and, mm. you know, by... You know, the things you do, like I've just written a book, mm, mm. you know, uh, called Are You Like Me? Mm. And about my journey. You can write. You mm. can write poems. Mm. I've learned to play the harp. You can play the harp. I say I play the harp for God. You can find so ways the to void, feel, feel yes, the vacuum. Yes, yes. Very good. In a healthy way. Exactly. Healthy way. In a healthy way. All right. So I'm going to be asking you the last question uh, in, this, in this area, and that's about purity. That's about purity, okay? In the light of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 to 4, you know, what approaches can singles employ to maintain, you know, what we call purity and integrity in relationships, and most especially in their interactions with the opposite gender? Because a, a, a lady like you, you know, spoke to me, and she experienced the same thing at a very young age. She lost her husband. She didn't mean anything, but she said, you know, all of a sudden, everybody's like... Ah, a step away from my husband, that kind of a thing, you know, <laughs> yeah. So how, how does one navigate that purity and integrity, especially in dealings with the opposite gender? Oh, well, I think for me, it, it, it has been, um, let's see, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> um, purity is something that I had believed in for, for a long time. I actually run a non-profit that part of our focus is teaching purity. Okay. and sexual abstinence. Exactly. And so I had had the opportunity to study a lot on it in order to teach it. Mm. And one of the most important things, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. is knowing yourself, mm -hmm. knowing your areas of weaknesses, mm -hmm. knowing your triggers, mm -hmm. and developing healthy boundaries. Great. Even if people don't agree with those That's boundaries. Right. It's like, Stick okay, I don't it. hug, you exactly. know, that. Exactly. Simple. Simple. Yeah. yeah. And even people Super say, simple. am I going to eat you? Well, No, don't sorry. worry. This is my boundary. <laughs> Exactly. It has nothing to do with you. Correct. I know myself, you know, so let me, so you, you need to know your boundary. Mm -hmm. If you have that boundary, communicate that boundary. Absolutely. Because if you don't and communicate it, it, then stick with it. Absolutely. So, and that will help you. Thank you so, so, so very much because we're going to be rounding up. So I'm just giving you one more thing. <laughs> just give one word of encouragement to the singles out there. You know, most especially to say it's a phase. For some of us, we're still going to get married. I mean, people are giving testimonies at 55, they're getting mm -hmm. married, yeah? So just one word of encouragement before we wrap this up. <laughs> one word of encouragement. Like you said, it, it can be a face for you. Yeah. 
For some people, it might not be a face. Yeah. But for many, it will be a face. Mm. Enjoy it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Just enjoy Enjoy this space. It may not come space. the second time. Yes. Thank enjoy you. It. Thank you so, so very much, Dr. Nyabito <laughs> Bikuino. You know, it is our hope that we have clearly conveyed that singleness is not a secondary option. It is a legitimate and potentially fulfilling way of life, particularly for the Christian. So singleness provides opportunities for spiritual intimacy with Christ. It provides opportunity for devoted service to community. And both of these are equally rewarding, if not more so, you know, than being married. So by focusing on intimacy with Christ, service to community, keeping to boundaries, by the grace and mercy of God, even singles can thrive and live very fulfilled and purposeful lives. Thank you once again, Dr. Enyabitobi Kuyeno. We want to trust that those of you who have joined us today have had a fulfilling experience. We ask that you please share your testimonies and questions with us on the watch with Wano at gmail.com and you can connect with us on plus two three four eight one two four zero two zero five three eight. Till I come your way again next week, this is Wano Ladetayo, the shaper. Shalom.